All right, welcome back, flock. Well, today focus again. Welcome back, flock. And today I'm going to talk about Mike McDonald's and his um, opening presser as the new DC. I uh, finally got a chance to go back and listen to the whole thing and kind of jot down some notes. And um, I'm going to go through my notes and just kind of talk a little bit of you know about each point that he made. Uh, but it, it opened up with John and saying John gave some reasons why he was uh, why he picked him, so to speak. And he said it was four things. One being uh, being part of the family. He grew up, you know, he kind of made his way in the NFL through the Ravens family and that familiar familiarity with the organization, with the, the culture of the organization, and um, made him a, a, probably gave him an edge on some other candidates, honestly. Probably gave him an edge on some other candidates. The fact that he grew up in the Ravens organization, he uh, been around Harbaugh for a while, been around EDC, started off as an intern, that I'm sure that helped him get the advantage, you know, on other guys. Um, say he was an integral part. So by in 2018 of the 2018 rebuild. So by the time 2018 came, he wasn't an intern anymore. He was actually coaching. If I'm not mistaken, he was coaching the linebackers at the time, and he helped uh, Wink rebuild that the defense to basically to what it is now. And even though we didn't have a great 2021. It still is not a bad defense structurally. It's one of the, the most feared defenses in the league when it's ran right and when the components are there. So I can understand why he would have a leg up on other guys. Um, the fourth point was he bet on himself. He decided to go to Michigan and, and run a defense by himself as the lead guy, not by himself, but as the lead guy to see if he can actually put a plan in place and execute it and by golly, he did it. Uh, Michigan made it to the – they finally beat Ohio State. Uh, and they made it to the college football playoffs, uh, if I'm not mistaken, for the first time. Maybe for the first time. I could be wrong on that. Uh, and if I am wrong, put it in the comment section. Um, now, getting on the mic. Um, he said he understands what it's like – what the play like a Raven culture is like. And that kind of goes back to the first point I made. He grew up in the Ravens organization. I keep saying grew up. He – his work growing up, so to speak, his, 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 his work, his work, um, career was part of the Ravens organization from intern to linebackers coach to leaving and coming back now as the DC. So he grew, basically grew up in the Ravens culture. And, um, I, when I talked to uh, Mark Clayton, I asked him, what was it like to play like a Ravens? What, what did that mean to him? And he said it meant toughness. It meant tenacity. It meant always going hard and, and, and battling through adversity. And so, you know, if that's what the culture is like, if that's the, the mantra of the culture and he embodies that, you know, by, by all means, you know, let, let's see. Let's see. Um, he said he wanted to build on what is there. And obviously he would say that because he helped put in what was there in 2018. And you don't want to go, well, some of us want us to go way on the other side and not do what was there, but... I really, I'm really going to take a look at some Michigan tape and kind of see if I can spot some glaring differences between what Wink, what Wink ran this year and what I think McDonald's going to try to do. But there's one glaring advantage I think McDonald had this year over what Wink had this year. And even what, what McDonald's going to have this year. You had Ojabu and Hutchinson which is prob arguably arguably could be two of the top three edge guys in the, in the draft. Definitely two of the top ten no, by far, but could be two of the top three depending on who you ask. And we don't have that at the edge. We got a bunch of versatile guys, but we don't have we we struggle generating pressure with four and then doing multiple things on the back end, which I think is what uh, Michigan was able to do because. I, I've done video on Ojabu so far, and I like what I see out the kid. And I haven't done video on Hutchinson, but we all know Hutchinson is is a dog too. But um, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, he also talked about being multiple. So to me, being multiple means you can be four three, three four, uh, have big nickel stuff, have regular nickel stuff, have dime stuff, and then you know you kind of want to, in my opinion, want to shut it down not too far after that because then you get in the wink territory with having too much stuff. And you still could have those same uh, personnel packages and just do simpler stuff. Uh, your disguises can be 
not as as exotic. You don't have to have Chuck Clark down at the line of scrimmage and still be the deep middle safety in the cover three. Uh, his his skill set just don't allow that unless he can um, either time the snap or he had to take off before the snap. And, you know, stuff like that just was unfeasible. Because, I mean, smart quarterbacks going to know how the roll go. And, you know, before he can get there, hit a receiver and he down the scene. Or it can be screwed up. And well, we always talk about the, 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 the way we screw up stuff on the back end. But uh, he said he want to be multiple, and I'm you know excited to see what multiple means to to McDonald. Um, he talked about enjoying his intern year, and that's what I really like to like about it. He grew up there. He um, he pretty much done every job. He he climbed the ladder. That's that's what I like about it. He climbed the ladder of of the organization, and now he's you know not at the top of it, but at one of the higher ups there. And you know he just worked hard. Worked hard, whatever his job was, whatever they asked of him. Apparently, he did it to hang around this long, and now he the fruits of the, the fruits of those labors are now starting to pay off with him being a DC of the Ravens. Um, he wants to get everybody on the same page, and I talked about this earlier uh, today when I was in the space. And um, what really stood out to me was uh, two words that he kept, you know, talking about in his presser: situational football, guys knowing what to do in, in situational football, and even in practice, you know, letting them know, hey, you know, this is coming up. What do you do? So now you get rid of that uh, or you attempt to get rid of that miscommunication and stop having guys, you know, when, when somebody scores a touchdown, got to look back and find what the other guy did because somebody's wrong. So um, situational football is something we sucked at defensively last year because we'd have, we'd have great first, second, third quarters, and then we implode in the fourth which is the fourth quarter is always full of situational football. You can have key situations in other parts of the game, but the fourth quarter is full of situational football, and we failed miser- miserably in a bunch of those situations because there were some games we had to lead up until the third and fourth quarter, and then another team showed up that wasn't the Ravens. So situational football is something that I hope he can improve on, and if that's one of the keys that he's going in to try to uh, fix. I'm I'm all for it. I like I like that that pinpointing the problem and trying to figure out ways to fix it. I, I you know I like that. and then whatever else pops up along the way, fix that also. Um, over communicate situations, is, which is what I just kind of talked about. Uh, somebody asked him about Queen wearing the dot. Um, I would really think that's what we want to get to, because I'd much rather him on the field every play than Chuck. I think he can do more stuff than Chuck other than play like the deep safety stuff. And we got other guys to, to do that. Um, the leap the leap Queen took, you know what? It's funny. I think about this now. I'm going to say this. Queen took this huge leap forward while McDonald was gone. I didn't think about that. And we just got rid of uh, Rex Ryan. Queen took this huge leap forward even after the season started while McDonald was gone. And we just got rid of the coach that got rid of his coach at that position. I think about that. <laughs> they asked him about um you know being a top ten defense. And he was confident that we can get back into the top ten, top five defense, basically with the guys we got. And they're really banking on, you know, everybody coming back healthy and implementing the system the way that he wants to implement it. I'm really looking for a simpler, faster defense. Uh, And if they play faster because they know their assignments, that's going to create more turnovers with MP coming back because MP is going to create more turnovers on his his own. Um, Talked about coaching some of the NFL guys that that are his his age or older. And he he says it's really not like getting guys to kind of do – which, I mean, you got you can you want to get guys to do what you want to do, but it's more of a partnership. You don't have to go in there demanding NFL guys to do things. It's more of a partnership. And um, somebody else mentioned like the locker room being a partnership anyway. It wasn't coaches didn't have to get on people's case. It was more of a co- co- cohesion thing um, in the NFL, and it's a lot different in college and high school. Um, and my last point was, can he do what he wants to do successfully without having? Them premier edge guys, we got we got uh, Odafi, and um, he's not premier, but he's he's pretty darn good. 
We got Houston is on the back end of his career, and he's still pretty good. You got uh, Bowser, who's just had surgery, so I don't know how well he'll bounce back next year. And um, can he do what he wants to do with with? I'm not gonna say lesser talent, but he don't he don't have that exceptional talent up front. Now, I don't know what we're gonna get in the draft, what we're gonna get in free agency, but I'm excited to see the new stuff, the new wrinkles that he brings in, on top of maybe not being as exotic as Wink, but cutting out some of the confusion that Wink had too. So um, that's that's my take on Mike McDonald. Um, welcome back to Baltimore. Um, not you know ne- didn't necessarily like the hire, but he's our guy now. So you know I'm behind him, and I'm, I wish him much success this upcoming 2020 season. I just get the ball rolling, and um, this is Coach Evans with Sit the Tally Films. Like, comment, subscribe. I appreciate you guys for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me for about 10 minutes. So uh, I'm out. Peace.